Jesus had to let go of this idea. I am the son of God and they shall not treat me like that. And I will not be lowly. I will not. That wasn't Jesus, you see. But that's us sometimes, right? Because we have this reputation. And maybe it's the reputation of other people. And sometimes it's the reputation to ourselves. We have this reputation, right? And for the sake of our reputation, there are things that we will pass up in life. We will not do in life because if we fail at doing those things, people are going to look at us differently. And maybe let's forget about people. You are going to look at yourself differently because you have this image of yourself in your head sometimes. Right. And that image of yourself that's 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 self-sustaining, that's sufficient, that's well off, that's safe, that's comfortable, that's stable. That reputation of yourself in your head would be completely disintegrated if you were to fail at this certain thing and you'd be humiliated and you'd be embarrassed. You'd be embarrassed with yourself so you do not do it. You don't do anything because of your reputation. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Thank you so much for tuning in once again to the Church Board Confessions podcast. I'm your host, Emmanuel Iheke. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in once again, another week, episode 83. Um, this episode I think is going to be one of the most important episodes that I've ever preached because it's a very important thing that I've learned in my, in my life, um, especially at this point in my life. And I hope that, uh, it can really help a lot of people. Um, before I get there, I have to do a shout out to these beautiful hoodies that we have finally released it's been a long time in the making we finally released these hoodies you can get it on www.uarelics.com that's uarelics.com if you want to support this ministry um you can cop yourself a hoodie there um relics is our apparel and merchandise line and with this line we just look to accompany each piece that we create with a sermon with some type of message from god to uplift you to inspire you um i would say like the vision is kind of like to get to the point where you know you look in your closet normally you look for what color you want to wear you look for what fit you want to wear whatever it might be um but you know i i envision one day you know you have a collection of relics in your closet too and when you look there, you don't just look for the color. You don't look, just look for the fit. You also look for the message that, you know, that you need that day that wants to inspire and uplift you, um, you know, the word of God. So if, if you want to support us and if you want to purchase this hoodie is at www.uarelics.com. And if you go to the website and you click on winter 21 in the navigation menu, it'll take you to the lookbook and it will um, tell you about like the actual specific message for this piece specifically. So <clears throat> if that's a, uh, sorry, I, <laughs> um, if that is, you know, something that you're interested in, I'd really appreciate if you took the time and, you know, make that purchase. But back to what we're going to talk about or what we're going to talk about. Let me introduce that. Um, like I said, I think that this is a very important message. It's been a very important message for myself. Um, and I want to just really say that when I preach a message here, it's not just me preaching to you. In fact, it's not me preaching to you. The things that I preach are the things that I'm learning. The things that I preach, like there's, there's places where I'm at in my life and the Holy Spirit communicates something to me or the scripture communicates something to me. And I may not be through it yet, but I want to help other people who may be in this situation. Because if I would lie to you, if I told you that there was a night this past night where anxiety did not wake me up in the middle of the night. I would lie to you if I told you that I still don't go through some of the things that I even preach about. And I would lie to you if I told you that I never go back and listen to my podcast and to episodes of my podcast so I can, you know, be encouraged and I can and I can, you know, I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm in the same boat and let that just be a testament to the fact that I'm not better than you in any way. Um, and I need the Holy Spirit um, and the Holy Spirit communicates messages to me and you know, I relay them to you guys and relay them to myself also. So um, let that just be known. I love you guys. Um, and we're in this together and we're going to get better together, just like my late cousin would say. And today, what I wanted to talk about was embarrassment. And by the end of this episode, what I want you to understand is that every time that you think about embarrassment and you are scared about embarrassment, you are scared about being humiliated. I want you to think about Jesus Christ. And we're going to we're going to go through it. We're going to talk about everything. This is going to be an episode that has a lot of a lot of stuff in it. OK. And like I said, I'm going through this, too. So bear with me to try and preach this to you guys, you know, as best as, you know, 
as I can, but thank God for Holy Spirit and um, you know, um I just pray that God lends me the power to to do all of this. Um I'll tell you this, my whole life I thought I was scared of feel uh, scared of failure. But it's not so much that I was I had a fear of failure. If we're going to talk things more specifically, I've had a fear of being embarrassed. I've had a fear of being humiliated. There have been times in my life where I have been paralyzed because of my fear of humiliation. And the crazy thing about it is that have you ever been embarrassed even though you were the only person that knew that you failed or you you were the only person that you kn- that knew that you were going through what you were going through, but you were so embarrassed? That's the type of person that I am. I will fail. I will miss a mark. And I'll be the only person in the room and I'll be so embarrassed. And here's the thing about embarrassment. I don't think we understand. Well, we understand those that go through it, but maybe it's not really talked about in the public realm as much how powerful the emotion of embarrassment is. Because when I talk to you about the emotion of embarrassment, understand that there are people who have killed themselves because of this feeling. Because they felt it. The humiliation. Because they felt it. And maybe they're the only person in the room that knew that they were going through what they were going through that or that or that that witnessed them fail or whatever it might have been. But that embarrassment to themselves. It's tough. If you are scared of embarrassment, you are not alone, man. And the thing is, I've been embarrassed so many times to myself in my life. I've in so many times and you would think that I get used to it by now. But no, you would think that at some point, maybe you get numb to it. Oh, you lose all the time. So then, you know, to yourself, right, to your own standards. And sometimes I will say this. Sometimes we're not losing. It's just that the standards that we have for ourselves are not the same standards that God has placed in our lives. But we think it's losing because we have a twisted idea of what standards are supposed to be in our lives, even though we're not the ones that create our lives. God is the one that created our lives. But we can go there. Right. Humiliation, embarrassment. That's been something that has truly paralyzed me different times in my life. And I tell you that the Holy Spirit even communicated me through this little, I have a little backboard that's hung up, a backboard hoop that's hung up on the back of my door. And I shoot shots all the time. I shoot shots all the time. You know, and and um, there'll be times where I will airball. I'll airball a shot and I'm embarrassed. There's nobody else in this room with me and I'm embarrassed. And there'll be times where I can miss 10 in a row. Short, all the same way, short. Maybe even more. I probably have missed more than that in a row. I have missed more than that in a row. Let me be clear. And I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. But it was one day I was shooting. I was shooting. I was shooting. And I was like, you know, what if there was a world where it wasn't about how many you made? It was never about how many you made, how many shots you made. But it was about how many times you can get back up after every time you miss and keep on giving it your all. Because there's something about some of us, you know, we get embarrassed to a point where, you know, it's not so much that we're going to quit. But right before we quit, you know, on, we're on this track to quitting one time, one day. Right before we quit, it's not that we quit, it's that we start to become slothful. We start to become lazy because we're not seeing the results. We're not hitting those shots. So then we think, what's the use, right? Why am I still doing this? Why am I still on this on this path? What's the use? Why, you know, ugh. and then you start to half everything. You start to 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 be slothful with everything. That's the, that's the type of person I've been. I'll be transparent with you. Emmanuel's not perfect. Emmanuel's not holier than you. That's what I've been through, and I'm talking about even things of God's work. Do you know I've done it? Do you know that I have, man? <laughs> Do you know that there are times that I was doing something for God, but because I didn't feel like maybe enough people showed up or to a Bible study or maybe uh, whatever it might have been, I, I became slothful with it. And I, and I didn't think much of it. And I thought uh, I didn't I didn't I didn't God's work. God's work. Oh, man, because I'd be tired of being embarrassed. I'd be tired of being humiliated. So what if I just didn't think it was it was anything? I didn't think much of it at all to begin with. And it was just whatever. So then so then if I were to lose, if I were to fail, I wouldn't be humiliated. I wouldn't be embarrassed. I would just not really care. It just it was what it was. There'll be times where I hated going to Bible study. 
midweek service at, at church my dad at my dad's church why because i would see his persistence i would i would we pray all that different stuff were there more people showing up no but my dad was persistent my dad was persistent my dad was persistent he was faithful he was faithful and i would just think to myself like man i would hate to continue to do god's work and you know not see fruits that i want to see or not see more people show up and I'd be embarrassed. But if we can be real, we can be real. I mean, I did my whole rant and everything like that. Anytime that you've ever come to the point, anything that has ever got you to the point where you thought you can be slothful with doing the task of God needs to be uprooted right now. And I pray that by the end of this episode, it be uprooted right now in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Slothfulness and laziness will not be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. This is not how we move. It's not how we do. It's not how we do. That's not how we do it. No, not us. Let others be slothful. Let others be lazy. Let others quit. Let others give up, whatever it might be. But us children of God, when we're doing the task that God has put us on this planet to do, whether it's how many people that praise us for it or not, we do it. And we do it for the glory of God. We do it for the kingdom because that's what we were made to do. That's what we were made to do. I told you that anytime you're feeling so embarrassed, so humiliating, you don't want to get back up. You don't want to continue. You don't want to keep on going. You don't want to persist. You don't want to remain faithful. I want you to think about a person. And the person that I want to talk about today is none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, because let's let's read first. Philippians chapter two, starting at verse five. It said, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross may god bless the hearing and the reading and understanding of his word in the mighty name of jesus christ i pray this is what we're talking about today it says let this mind be in you what's this mind what is it talking about it's talking about how jesus no longer clinged to the privileges of being this this you know just just the deity right and and, and god lowered himself gave his only son and came down in the flesh to be in the likeness of man. Hmm. What it says is, but made himself of no reputation, completely submitting the existence, submitting, Jesus submitted himself to the Father, to the will of the Father completely. Forsook the reputation of being this deity that is, you know, when you think of God, what do you think of? That was Jesus in the flesh. But he forsook that reputation and became a lowly servant to just do the will of the Father. Hmm. To become a servant. And he was obedient. He humbled himself to be obedient even unto death. Hmm. You know, Jesus had to let go of this idea. I am the son of God and they shall not treat me like that. And I will not be lowly. I will not. That wasn't Jesus, you see. But that's us sometimes, right? Because we have this reputation. And maybe it's the reputation of other people. And sometimes it's the reputation to ourselves. We have this reputation, right? And for the sake of our reputation, there are things that we will pass up in life. We will not do in life because if we fail at doing those things, people are going to look at us differently. And maybe let's forget about people. You are going to look at yourself differently because you have this image of yourself in your head sometimes. Right. And that image of yourself that's 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 self-sustaining, that's sufficient, that's well off, that's safe, that's comfortable, that's stable. 
That reputation of yourself in your head would be completely disintegrated if you were to fail at this certain thing and you'd be humiliated and you'd be embarrassed. You'd be embarrassed with yourself so you do not do it. You don't do anything because of your reputation. But what Jesus did is that he forsook his reputation, acted like he never had one. And he came down and he became obedient unto death. They killed him. This is God in the flesh. And he allowed his own creation when he came down in the flesh to kill him. Does it get more humble than that? Does it get more tunnel vision than that? Because we swear that we can be obedient to God till death, right? That's what we think that we, we think we're big popping like that. But some of us, the same people, us that's saying I'll be obedient to God to death, we're not even, we're not even there to be obedient to God through, through humiliation. Because the moment we get humiliated, the moment we fail, ha, huh, and our reputation it's destroyed amongst the people that we're with and we look stupid not you look like you're a faithful servant of god no you look stupid they made you look stupid your failure made you look stupid the moment that happens we're out <laughs> we're out of there but we act like we're obedient to death but you're not even obedient through humiliation you can't you, you don't you don't even do that I don't think we understand. Excuse me. Excuse me. You know, every every first Sunday, my church, we do a Holy Communion. And there's a reason why we do Holy Communion in um in, in our faith. And it's to remember what Jesus Christ did for us. It's it's a it's a tradition that we do um to remember the death of Jesus Christ, how he died for us and, and what that means to us. How often do you sit down and really understand what Jesus Christ did for you? How often do you read Matthew chapter 27 and, and John 19 and so on and actually see the physical torture that Jesus had went through and mental torture that Jesus had and spiritual torture that Jesus had went through for you? How often do you acknowledge that? The amount of humiliation that Jesus underwent for you. Because remember, this is God in the flesh. Did you remember that? And we're going to read. We're going to read. Because I want you to understand that when God came down in the flesh, he allowed his own creation to kill him like a criminal. You don't got to take my word for it. I'm going to read this right now. We're going to take our time. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 27, verse 27. That's where we're going to start. And I'm going to walk you through. And um, there's there's more that Jesus went through, but I'm, I'm just reading at this place. I'm not I'm even not even reading the part where he's been flogged. So that should let you know. <sighs> Matthew chapter 27, verse 27, it says, Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the prey praetorium i'm reading from um, new king james version praetorium and gathered the whole garrison around him look here and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him I'm talking about jesus the god god in flesh and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him hmm. when they had twisted a crown of thorns they put it on his head and a reed in his, in his right hand, and they bowed a knee before him and mocked him. They're mocking him, saying, Hail, the king of the Jews. This is God in the flesh. Then, verse 30, then they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they took the robe off him. This is the second time they've taken Jesus' clothes off. Put him, put, put his own clothes on him and led him away to be crucified. Now, as they came out, they found the man of Serene, Simon by name, 
him they compelled to bear his cross, Jesus' cross. And when they had come to a place called Golgatha, um, that is to say, place of a skull, they gave him sour wine. They gave Jesus sour wine mingled with gal to drink. Um, but when he had tasted it, he would not drink. This is God in the flesh. Then they crucified him. And look at this. Look at this. Talk about humiliation. And divided his garments, casting lots. They took his clothes and started. Jesus is hanging on the cross right now. They're, they're casting their lots with it. This is a, this is God in the flesh who didn't sin. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they, were ca they cast lots. Sitting down, they kept watch over him there, and they put over his head the accusation written against him. This is Jesus, the king of the Jews. You see, they didn't write that there out of respect. They wrote that out of mockery. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and another on the left. And those who passed by blas blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, You who destroy the temple and build it in three days, because it was this time where Jesus, he was actually talking about himself, but they, they, they thought he was talking about the temple. He said, You, they said, You who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. And look at this part. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. And if you know me, you know that there's one place in the Bible that I love to read every time, and it's Matthew chapter 4. Why do I like to read Matthew chapter 4? Because it's this time where Jesus has been fasting 40 days and 40 nights, and the devil comes to him to tempt him. And what does the devil say? He says, if you are the son of God, turn that stone into bread. If you are the son of God, then cast yourself down from this high point and the angels will save you. And now after all that Jesus Christ did while he was doing his ministry, it comes down to the point again. And people are still trying to, to make him to doubt who he is. And people are still doubting who he is. And they ask him, if you are the son of God, then save yourself, man. <laughs> they never respected him. Likewise, the chief priests also mocking with the scribes, with the scribes and elders said, he saved others. He was healing people himself. He cannot save. If he is the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. That's that's what they, that's what they're saying to Jesus. Oh, my goodness gracious. Talk, talk about a humiliating and embarrassing death. A humiliating and an embarrassing death that Jesus underwent for me and for you. You cannot forget that part. It was for me and for you. And at any moment, Jesus Christ said, you know what? My reputation matters. I will not be embarrassed and I will not be humiliated like this. And they were saying, aren't you the son of God? Come down and we'll believe you. Save yourself and we'll believe you. You said you're the son of God, but you can't even save yourself. And if Jesus said, you know what? I am the son of God. And he got down from that cross. Me and you, we would perish. We would not be alive today. We would perish. Our souls would perish. If he wasn't able to undergo humiliation and embarrassment, and I'm begging you, you that have been embarrassed, you that have been humiliated for the sake of the kingdom, you that have been embarrassed, you've been humiliated because you continue to fail at the thing that is said that God told you to do for years, for months, for weeks. You've been humiliated, you've been embarrassed. What is your reputation anymore? I beg you, please. I please, just like Jesus did, I want you to continue to go. I want you to understand that when God is telling you to continue to go, even though you've been humiliated and you've been embarrassed, it's not because he's just saying it. He knows exactly how you feel. 
exactly how you feel because when he came down in the flesh he underwent it himself this this path that you were called on humiliation embarrassment it's expected it's expected but i want you to be able to carry on despite it all i want you to be able to carry on because jesus did that for you and please when we talk about jesus man do you understand that they, that he did this? He gave away his reputation. He came down. He was humiliated. He was embarrassed. And there are still people today who will say that is not the son of God. In fact, he's not real. It was all a fake. He's a fake. He's a liar. He's a liar. He didn't do it. He wasn't the son of God. He was humiliated. He was embarrassed. And there's people to date that will say, nah. He wasn't, he wasn't real. Don't be one of those people. Please, 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 please. And I'm going to do something right now. And you know what's coming next. I want you to take this opportunity. No, there's no flashing lights. There's no smoke. There's no choir playing right now. But I want to encourage you that if you have not given your life to Christ already, you just read what I told you he underwent. And that wasn't all of it. But you read what he did. And when he did it, the reason why he stayed on that cross and the reason why they were mocking him and he still stayed there was because of you. So if you'd like to make that decision, maybe it's not the most glitzy and glammy time for you to do it right now maybe maybe you don't look nice right now whatever it might be maybe you wanted to do it with your friends and your family let me tell you something jesus is coming back soon we don't have time to wait for your friends and family for you to make this decision right now let's do it if you like to give your life to christ right now repeat after me this is a prayer to god repeat after me let's go let's do it heavenly father i am a sinner Today I repent for my sins and surrender my life to you. I am sorry for the ways I have sinned against you. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. I believe you raised him from the dead. I accept Jesus Christ into my life as my Lord and Savior. I will live a life of denying myself and committing to your way every day of my life. Let your will be done. Not my own. In Jesus name. Amen. If you made that decision. If you repeat it after me and you've done so with faith. Let me tell you something, there are angels in heaven right now. Maybe you can't hear their voices, and it's okay. But they're rejoicing over your life. They're rejoicing over your soul. And let me tell you something, I've done my job. <laughs> Look here. Your life will never be the same. And it's not going to be because everything's perfect and you'll never have any issues in life again. That's not what I'm saying. But your life is never going to be the same because now Jesus is there too. He's in your boat. He's in your boat. I love you guys. I love you guys. I love you guys. I love you guys. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to come up and preach to you guys week in and week out and week in and week out. And let me tell you something. If you made that decision just now, please reach out to me at I-H-E-K-E -E underscore. That's my Instagram. Iheke underscore. Reach out to me personally. And I'll pray some more with you. Mm -hmm.